Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name's Mike and you're watching Triple T Acres. And in today's video, we are gonna be going over spray foam. Now I just posted a video a few weeks ago and we discussed the efficiency of how this stuff works. I showed you some cold conditions here in Ohio and we tested out a few things. Well, that video went really, really well. And a lot of you had a lot of comments and concerns and even a few really good questions that I really wanna to answer today. So if you are somebody who is interested in doing spray foam in one of your buildings, this video is for you. We're gonna dive into a lot of those questions. This will help you have an informed decision on whether you wanna do spray foam or not. So stick around guys. I hope you enjoy the video. Isn't spray foam toxic or dangerous? Well, the answer to that question is yes and no. In the beginning, when they're applying the spray foam, it will off gas. Those two mixtures are coming together. When it comes out the gun, they mix together and create that finished foam. While that process is happening, the foam is going to off gas. It's actually generating a lot of heat and it is going to put off some fumes. And that is why most installers, which they should be, are wearing PPE. They're wearing a P100 mask and then they're gonna wear a suit. Now the suit isn't because it's gonna burn their skin, but there's a lot of overspray that's going to land on just about everything when they're using anything that is using air to spray it. So that's why. But after the foam sets up, it's about 24 hours for it to completely cure, the foam should not off gas any longer. Now let's think about this. If it was toxic forever, do you think that it would be in hospitals, schools, residential, government buildings. It would not be. If they had any shred of evidence that that was true, we wouldn't be allowed to do it. They would shut these companies down immediately. So the question on that and a few of the comments said that that's going to kill you in the long run. It's not. That is just blatantly false. So spray foam is safe, not when it's being applied. Your building is going to burn to the ground. Isn't spray foam extremely flammable? Well, the answer to that question is no. It is not extremely flammable. These things, again, are being put in government buildings, schools, and residential buildings. If they were just flammable, we wouldn't be allowed to do that. There is a great YouTube channel called The Kelly's Country Life, and he does a great example. He takes closed cell foam and open cell foam, and he takes a propane torch to it, and he torches it. And what ends up happening is it will catch on fire but when he takes the flame away from it, it immediately goes off. Anything that you're gonna put a flame to is going to catch on fire. You could say that about any of the wood in my building. So spray foam itself is not flammable. It's not going to light like that. A lot of spray foam has some fire retardant built into it, but another thing that you can do if it's something that concerns you is there's some spray that you can spray on these. Most people are not just going to leave the spray foam open. I'm not either. This is just applied in October. My next project is to cover this thing up, but I have no fear that the thing is just going to ignite from just a tiny little spark. I'm always careful about what I'm doing around any material that might catch on fire. Which is better, open cell or closed cell? Well, in my opinion, it just depends on what you're trying to do. As far as R value goes, closed cell has an R value of about six to seven per inch. Open cell has an R value of three and a half to four per inch. So to get the same R value with open cell versus closed cell, you would have to apply the open cell almost two times the amount of closed cell. Now, where are the advantages of open cell versus closed cell? Well, there's many of them. We're gonna go over those more throughout the video, but my main one was cost. The cost of open cell was dramatically different than closed cell. And a lot of people were saying, you should have done closed cell. When we talk about figures, it was going to cost $18,000 to use closed cell in here. And they were gonna put about three inches of closed cell. The next price was $12,000, and that was gonna be two inches of closed cell foam. And I had another price for 9,000 from another company. I paid a total of $6,000 for open cell spray foam on here, which is plenty of our value for this building. There is a point where cost is prohibitive. And if I spent $18,000 or $12,000 in closed cell spray foam, I couldn't even enjoy this building because I'd be having to pay off the spray foam for such a long time. It is actually really close to the cost of the structure itself. And to me, that just doesn't make any sense. So cost was a big decider for me to choose open cell. Your building is going to rot. 
That came up a few times in the thread, and that's simply not the case every time spray foam is applied. If you understand the laws of thermodynamics, and more specifically, the condensation principle, you will find that condensation happens in this application when warm air meets a cold surface and reaches the dew point temperature. Well, that shouldn't happen if you have spray foam put on appropriately. If they've sprayed it evenly across all of the surfaces, filled all the gaps and cracks, there shouldn't be any warm air that meets a cold surface. So it's not just going to rot your building as long as they applied it correctly. You're not supposed to spray spray foam directly on the metal. Well, that's definitely not that big a deal, but it's definitely good practice that if you plan on putting spray foam on to put a house wrap or some kind of barrier that goes between the metal and the spray foam. And the reason you might want to do that is because we don't know what the future holds. If you bump into the building with some equipment or something happens that you need to replace a panel, the last thing you want to do is take the screws out and have spray foam connected directly to it. By putting that barrier between, you can remove metal, you can replace metal, and the spray foam will stay in place attached to the house wrap. So it's not a must, but it's definitely something that you should think about if you're gonna plan on doing it. But if you haven't done it, it's not that big a deal. What about roof leaks? Or you should have put closed cell under your roof, not open cell. Well, hear me out. If I put closed cell underneath my roof, which closed cell has a great built-in vapor barrier, if it does such a good job at doing a vapor barrier, I think that that could pose a risk of not knowing or finding out way too late if I do have a roof leak. So if that is sealed off the roof and one of the screws after a decade, the gasket rots out in it and water starts to come through, well, what's going to happen is that water is going to sit on top of that closed cell and it will either rot the wood right there where the purlin is, or it's going to run down at almost like a second roof and land on the soffit or anything at, down at the end of the line. And when I find out that it's rotting there, I know that I'm in big trouble if I have closed cell. Well, it's totally different with open cell. And I think that's the beauty of it using post frame construction is that if I do have a roof leak and I don't put a ceiling in here, again, if you put a ceiling in here, you're not gonna be able to see anything. But if I just spray the open cell directly under the roof side and I get a roof leak, I'm gonna know immediately. There's going to be a ring around that open cell spray foam and I'm gonna get on the roof and I'm going to address it right away. I'm gonna know exactly where that roof leak is. And I think that is the benefit of using open cell under your roof side, is not because it doesn't have a vapor barrier, it's because I'll know when and if there is a leak. You should have put insulation under your concrete. Now this was an excellent comment and I never thought about that when I was building this building and I really wish I had. So if you think about it, the concrete itself steals a lot of BTUs. And because it makes contact directly with the ground, the ground is also going to steal those BTUs. If I was able to put the foam board before the concrete, the concrete would have heated up, it would have met that foam board, and then it would have held it a lot better. So I already have excellent insulation here with the open cell. It would have been that much better if I would have done that. So if you're thinking about building a structure and you're going to insulate it, Seriously consider putting foam boards or some type of insulation under the concrete. Obviously, there's a lot to think about between open cell and closed cell spray foam. And by no means did we hit everything in this video, but I was hoping to give you just a little bit more information on whether you wanna choose between the two. And there's a lot to think about. So make sure you do your own research. Don't just listen to me. And if you're someone who has experienced issues with spray foam or have great experiences with spray foam, leave comments below. It will help all of us out. I chose open spray foam in my situation because this is just a shop. And I store my equipment in here. My kids play basketball in the wintertime. And it's been such a great space, an extension from my house that we can enjoy as my family. But guys, that is going to wrap up the video for today. Make sure you hit the like button if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel. But until next time, we'll see you in the next video.